Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 13th of July, 2017. Looking out at the Pacific, we do have Tropical Storm Fernanda way down here on the right-hand side of the infrared satellite shot. This will be the remnants, the leftovers of Eugene. And you can see some of that high-level moisture streaming into Southern California. As for Fernanda, the forecast track will take it off in this direction over the next several days. And if we look at the Hurricane Center official forecast track, we can see that this will more than likely become a major hurricane through here. And that will definitely boost the accumulated cyclone energy score, the ACE index, for the eastern Pacific. And in fact, the East Pacific will lead the globe in accumulated cyclone energy for the year. It's kind of like a, a way of saying that a certain basketball or football team is number one. Um, in this case, the East Pacific is going to be number one. We have not had a West Pacific typhoon yet, and we have had no Atlantic hurricanes. And the Eastern Pacific has been fairly busy, but this will certainly be the first long-lived hurricane uh, globally for this particular season anywhere in the warm season that we've had, you know, starting, you know, March, April, May, and, and, and on forward, uh, this will be it. So it'll be interesting to watch. Probably not going to be an issue for Hawaii, but we'll keep an eye on it just to be safe. In the Atlantic Basin, this would be the leftovers of Tropical Depression 4. Moving through South Florida today, a little bit of a curvature to it. You can see there's some energy in here, but otherwise, you know, it's just too much downward motion, too much sinking air. The Atlantic Basin is just not primed for development right now, despite this energy that's moving through Florida, as I mentioned, and this would be the energy I believe that we were watching as it moved all the way across and created all of that hullabaloo that the GFS and the Euro showed, well, the Euro for one day anyway, uh, and this is going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles, so let's zoom in and take a look at this feature. You folks in the Windward Islands, and maybe even as far north up here as Guadeloupe, uh, and then certainly points south from there, including Barbados, out in front here, you can see that wave energy right there, and it's curled up just a little bit, tropical wave moving through, and this will bring some showers and thunderstorms, brief gusty winds, and that will be impacting the area over the next 24 hours. You can see also strong upper-level winds moving across this way, indicating shear in the atmosphere, and then overall dry air, subsidence in the atmosphere through here. All of this very, very indicative of a not favorable environment for development. And in fact, the intertropical convergence zone squashed to the south down here, and that's all due to this very high pressure. I say very high. It's just a dominant, strong high pressure area. The Bermuda Azores high, really dominating the weather scene over the Atlantic here, keeping all of this in check. So there you go. Easy to see that. We'll move on now to the Thursday update. Every Monday, every Thursday, we get a new NOAA NESDIS sea surface temperature anomaly chart. It's just a different methodology that you know, the different agencies use. They're not completely, you know, they're not so different that we get drastic differences between these charts. Some of them update on a weekly average and some of them are snapshots. And some of them have different background periods that the anomalies are based off of, if that makes any sense at all. But anyway, here's the update for today, July 13th. And you notice in the Eastern Pacific, a few areas of patchy cool anomalies showing up and a few areas of patchy warm. And then over here, even in the what we call the Nino 3 area of the tropical Pacific, you know, roughly through here, something like that. Uh, you know, it looks somewhat warmer than normal in some of these areas that we talked about here, including this one. But if you look real close, you know, stuff, this, this matters. You got this little ribbon right through here where it's pretty much right on the money, right at average where it should be. And the main thing is we do not see any large areas of this color, you know, where we're looking at a degree to a degree and a half Celsius widespread throughout this region. And then, you know, really, really warm next to South America. None of that's happening for the most part. All right. So that's the bottom line. And at the same time, the Atlantic stays very warm in the main development region. Uh, also, the Gulf has warmed up 
to where it's pretty much at or slightly above normal in some cases. And if we go back and we look at June 26, wow, what a difference. This is just a few weeks ago, folks, June 26 to where we are now. I mean, my goodness, uh, what a difference in the Gulf of Mexico and even parts of the eastern Pacific you can see there off the coast of Baja, uh, and I've talked about this a lot, this is filled in with more positive anomalies, but still nothing in the eastern Pacific to suggest a significant warming event or, or what we call an El Nino taking shape. And so again, a few weeks ago, that's a pretty big change for the Gulf of Mexico, you got to admit. Now I want to show you because 2013 was a tremendous bust for those forecasting uh, seasonal activity and this is what we had roughly the same time period in 2013. Uh, these maps don't always update right on top of each other as Mondays and Thursdays are not always going to be the 11th or whatever of the month. Does that make sense? But this is pretty close. July 11th, 2013 and you can clearly see the distortion of the pattern very warm water compared to average north of 20 degrees and, and even farther north than that latitude. Uh, in fact, let's erase that and start over. The warmest water, Jacksonville, Florida, is roughly 30 degrees north latitude. I mean, come on. Your upward motion was way up here in the subtropics and points north, and then all that sinking air because of that, you know, hammering the tropics down here. No wonder nothing could develop. And then all this very cold water lurking around, it was just all screwed up, definitely. And then in the uh, eastern Pacific, you know, you had a pretty favorable setup over here. But, you know, this was also weird because we had a lot of warm water in the subtropics north of Hawaii. I mean, it was warm in the North Pacific that year. So 2013 was just an anomaly and a goofball season uh, and, a, and a goofball year as a whole in terms of how the water temperatures were fitting into all of that. So if we compare 2013 with what we have now, the energy, the water, the warm water is focused uh, basically where it should be down here in the tropics, and we don't have any major imbalances or weird things going on. When we go and we look at other active seasons, you say, well, what did things look like in another active season? And we've looked at those, 04, 05, the king of the seasons, really. And there are others that are somewhat analogous. And what you don't see in an active season is that, <laughs> where the warm water is far up to the north like that. All right, so let's look at the GFS, dare I do so. This will be upgraded, supposedly, on July the 19th. We'll talk about that next week, but... Let's put this in the motion over the next five days and see what's happening out there. Uh, really no energy to speak of entering the Caribbean as the model was showing earlier. But then there's some tropical wave energy trying to gather out here as we get out to 96 and 100 hours plus. And so that by 120 hours, <clears throat> lo and behold, it's up to its old tricks trying to develop some solid vorticity right about there at hour 120. You also notice really nothing in the Gulf of Mexico and no real strong tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. So just for the heck of it, let's take a look at that last frame at hour 120. You know, again, something to watch because, you know, what if the GFS finally gets it right? So in 120 hours, increasing in vorticity down here. And we'll just watch it. You know, no reason to get it uh, worried or whatever. And, and I really think the power of what we do here and other people that post sensible stuff. If you go and you post a 300-hour or 240-hour GFS image that shows, you know, landfalls wherever, uh, and, and people get upset about that. The professional meteorologists, you know, I'm a geographer. I have a geography degree, and I'm an earth scientist. I'm not a technical, you know, math and physics-based meteorologist. But even other people in social sciences rightfully get irritated when somebody posts on their Facebook page a GFS 300-hour forecast showing, you know, a Cat 4 hurricane right into New Orleans, and they say, we're just making you aware that it's hurricane season. <laughs> and it's like, really? Um, and also, you wanted another 40,000 likes to your page or something. Um, that's, that's no good. There's no helpful 
information in that at all. We know it's hurricane season. Those of us who live near the coast, it's June 1st through November 30th. And for those who have no idea that it's hurricane season, um, they're probably not even looking at your stuff anyway. And in the off chance somebody shares that image, and unfortunately you'll see that, you know, people start getting hysterical. And some people do get very nervous about it. So, you know, when we look at this and we say, okay, there's some increasing energy trying to gather at hour 120 uh, in the deep tropics at the end of July, roughly, where it's getting there. That's about the 18th, so still the middle of July. You look at it and you say, all right, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And we will see if that tries to verify as we get closer. So, anyway, enough off my soapbox um, that's all I have to say about that. Isn't that what Forrest Gump said? I'm not even going to attempt an impression, but you get the idea. All right. So with things being quiet in the Atlantic and everything under control in the Eastern Pacific from Fernanda heading west, not causing any major problems for anybody, I will be able to take a few days off and do other things. Um, and you can too, right? So I'll be back on Monday. That's what I'm getting at. And Monday will be an important day. We're going to go over the weekly sea surface temperature anomalies. We're going to look at the ENSO uh, forecast and you know where are we in the state of the El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomenon. We're going to look at these maps, but then we can dig deeper. Monday is going to be a long one, like I talked about. We're going to look at the climatological distribution of hurricane activity because you're going to have people saying, well, it's slow now, and I don't think we're going to have any hurricanes like they said they're going to be. You know, you might be right, but I'll show you why you're probably going to be wrong. And so that's all coming up on Monday. So enjoy the next few days off yourselves. You know, kind of glance at the tropics once in a while, but don't worry about it too much. July is our time to kind of get ready for August, September, and October. And I'll be doing some of that myself, even though I won't be producing these updates. There's always equipment to check, things to test. And then uh, next week, I'll be traveling to Houston for the Storm Geo 28th Annual Hurricane Seminar. I'll talk about that more on Monday as well. So it's busy for everybody, even though the tropics aren't busy. Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend when it gets here. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and listening to what I have to say. I am Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again on Monday.